Welcome to Life by Abe. My name is Abe. I am the host of Expat Your Life and Life by Abe, two channels that I've combined to help tell stories of expats to inspire you to take your first step of traveling or moving abroad. Uh, today, we're going to be talking with Joel, uh, who I met at the NAS Summit uh, two weeks ago? Almost two weeks ago. Two weeks right, ago. Right, right. Uh, interesting character so i wanted to catch his story and ask him questions and get to know him better on camera so welcome to the show thank you very much appreciate it yeah. awesome awesome yes yeah and uh before we get into it mm. tell us a little bit about yourself what does joel do what do you like to do in your free time and uh, what are you doing here so for me i love teaching english i like to make it fun because when i was a kid teachers were boring most of the time i had a few that i can remember but Yes, I did not like school at all. And I want to be sure that whenever I teach, it is a very memorable, fun, exciting, but also educational experience for the kids. Mm -hmm. And that the schools want me back. You know, they, they beg to have me back. And that's one thing that I was taught in Japan, actually. That's where a lot of my life lessons came from. So, but for me, what else do I do? I like making videos. Okay. I do uh, cafe vlogs and I learned recently that I love coffee. Okay. Yeah, I learned recently about that. And before I came to Vietnam, I hated it. So, okay. but what else is there? I think that mm, traveling is amazing. It will open your eyes up to what your country really is about. It will open your eyes up to what your country actually is in the eyes of other people. Mm -hmm. And it will see, it will allow you to see different perspectives from a lens that you have never thought of before from viewpoints of culture, viewpoints of even religion in some cases, viewpoints of where you are in the world, how better you can be, how better life is, and how worse it can really get. So, yeah, I guess that's the intro about me. Okay, okay, yes. interesting. Well, yes. that sounds great. I'm excited to jump in and ask some more questions. Sure, sure. Uh, before we get into the deep stuff, let's hit a few surface level. How long have you been living overseas? I've been living, this is my maybe 11th year. Okay. Right. Wow, 11 years. 11 years, yes. Okay. And uh, where have you been in your travels? Where have you lived? So I've lived in China for two years. I've been in Japan for about eight years and Vietnam for almost a year now. Okay. So but I've traveled to Malaysia. Thailand and India as well. Okay. That's right. And where's your favorite place so far? Ooh, you know what? I have a deep love for Malaysia. I have a deep love for the KLCC. I really do. That was my first country where I went to where my second country out the States, but I don't know. It left an impression on me. I was only, uh, uh, only there for two weeks, but when I flew into the airport, everyone was super kind. You know when you go to airports, people have a mean looking face, and not mean people, but they just mean looking face. But they were kind, they were quite generous, they were showing me out of the airport. It was very, it was a very relaxing experience. And I love that about Malaysia. I love that about the KLCC. And it just left a really good impression on me. Okay. That's all. Yeah. I, uh, I recently went to, uh, last year, late yeah. last year, I went to Kuala Lumpur right. for four days. Right. I enjoyed it. Um, but my experience coming in was a little... Okay, okay. It, it was a, a little bit tense because mm. my passport wouldn't scan. Oh, okay. No idea why, but okay. it wouldn't scan and they, they thought it was fake. It's, okay. it's worn. My passport needs to get replaced soon. Gotcha. So they were like, is this real? Is this real? <laughs> it's real. It's real. Yeah, it could be a nerve wracking experience. <laughs> yeah. I got gotcha, you. Yeah. But eventually I was, they let me in and I enjoyed the, my time there. So I, sure. would, I would honestly, I'm going to go back to Malaysia. Oh, 100%. 100%. Yes. So, cool. And then uh, where in the States are you from? Chicago. 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 Ooh. All right, we're going to have fun with this. Oh, yes. So you talked about learning more about your country, mm. about America, through the eyes of other people. Mm. Can you explain a little bit more on that? So for me, the biggest thing I realized out of the States is one thing that we are taught about and still going on today is like race. And when you get out of the States, you kind of know it already in the States, but it really hits home when you're around people that just don't look like you or have no connection to your culture. 
we are a lot more alike than we are different. A lot more alike. Yes, you might eat different ways. You might eat different food and you will look physically different. But at the core, we all cry. We all have pain. We all suffer from, from, from something. We've all experienced something bad and good. And we can all relate to those things. For example, if you're a guy, no matter what country you're, you're from, if you see a beautiful girl, all the guys, I don't care what country you're from. Mm. <laughs> you know? So that's it. And we can relate on so many things. Mm -hmm. If we see something that we like, if we t uh, taste a food that's delicious, our, everybody's eyes light up. Why? Because we're all human. Mm -hmm. And that is one of the best things about just life itself, realizing how similar you are. Even teaching. Kids are the exact same around the world. I don't care where you are from. They're all crazy, goofy, Overly honest, nose picking kids. That's all they are. And curious, that's all they curious, curious yes. you know? And extremely no filter, you know? Mm -hmm. But that's what a kid is. And when you see that, you start to realize why are we all always fighting each other? Mm -hmm. I don't like that. We are so much similar than different. I don't care what your skin type is. I've been helped by people who are black, white, you know, uh, Japanese, Chinese, Malaysian. So, like so many people. So for me to go out and say, you know, I'm better than her or he's better than me. No way. I'm sorry. I can't. Mm -hmm. I cannot. So, yeah, I've realized over the years is that personality, your ability to speak well, your ability to present yourself in a very professional way and your ability to have a skill set that people can respect and honor and be helped by is what gets people to, to, to trust you. I don't care what you look like. Mm -hmm. And... Yes, is, is there discrimination? Sure, yes. There's, in every single country, there's someone that does not gonna like you for the way that you look, fine. But, I'm sorry, for the most part, it is good. Mm -hmm. It is good. And that's one thing that I've learned is to not think about life through the lens of race all the time. Okay. That's it, yeah. Yeah, and I think as being black men coming right. from America. That, right, that, that's, that's something that we're ingrained with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, that, yeah. And that, that it's, for me, I did a year in Japan before I came here, so. and that was a huge like relief. Yes, right, I right. Um, I still catch myself even here. I still catch sure, myself sure. like, oh, I see, I see some, <laughs> some. I'm yeah. I'm just gonna yeah. I'm not gonna go down that way. But mm -hmm, right. I think that's just because it's what's left over from the experiences. Yeah, you know what? It's you know I I catch myself, and it's not common anymore. But when something bad happens that's like really, really bad, that's out of my control, and it happens from someone that doesn't look like me, it's like, it's because I'm black. No, it's not because I'm black. <laughs> no, 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 but like, and I always make sure that thought, because it's been ingrained in us for so long, mm -hmm. it can pop up. And I try to make sure that race is not my first lens to look through. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, what's the full situation? What's the full scope here? What can I do to make the situation better? You know, that's one thing, like making sure that Yes, not everything that happens to you is exactly your fault, but there are so many things that you can control. The way you react, the way you, how, how fast you find a solution. Are you gonna blame someone for you or are you gonna try to get help to fix it? Mm -hmm. And when things are put on you, it forces you to look at the situation and try to fix it as soon as possible because it is on you. When it's on someone else, you fall back, but that can make the situation worse. Mm -hmm. So when you are active looking for a solution for something, then you're much more in control of it. Mm -hmm. And thus you're much more happy overall. Well, it kind of goes also into the background. You said that you really enjoy teaching. Mm -hmm. uh, these experiences that, and, and uh, encounters that you have right. can actually turn out to be educational and teaching moments mm -hmm. to someone who may already have preconceived notions from previous experiences that were bad or from what they see in media and like everything. So it's an opportunity for you to change the way someone else is thinking. I agree. Um, and you know, that's what I've experienced and mm -hmm. what I've taken. Um, so yeah. All right. Cool. Mm -hmm. Cool. So with that, what has been your biggest challenge with living overseas mm -hmm. in the 11 years? You know what? Most of my time has been in Japan, okay. so I will go from there. And it's been 
realizing that you can't do everything alone. Mm. One thing I've seen is that when it comes to the Filipinos, the Chinese, and most cultures around the world, because the UK, the USA, Australia, we're very unique countries because everyone kind of lives there. Mm. Most countries are homogeneous and most countries don't speak English. So, but they all have a great community kind of connection with each other. So when they travel, they travel in packs. Mm. You know, when I first saw my Chinese friends come to my university, they was like 30 deep. I was like, yo, <laughs> so it's cool. <laughs> but I've, I've noticed that many like Americans and I guess maybe some Western people travel individually, maybe in small groups, but it's not as big. Because when I see the Filipinos, they're always in the group. Chinese, they're always in the group. Indians, you know, so. And one thing I've, I've, I've learned is that you need a team. You need to work with people and you cannot do everything alone. I've lived my life as a loner for so long and you can't do too much. There's a cap to doing things alone. And, we can, and when, you, when, you, when you can work with people, you understand that, yeah, you might have to compromise some things, but at the same time, you don't want to be a pushover. Mm -hmm. You want to be respected, but you also want to know that you won't get everything you want, but you can get most things. And if you can do that and work with people and learn to understand people first, it makes them want to trust you and understand you as well because you took time to know about them. And that's it. Yeah. So the, the patience in building your network and your patience with meeting people mm -hmm. has helped you to get farther. 100%. It's, it's that patience and it's also patience that people need time to change, as we do. Mm -hmm. So if someone is not who they should be, but they're trying, take that. that, that that's life. If they're making a mistake, because we've all made mistakes, but people have given us chances, that's why we're here. And if there's someone that admires you, and they're trying to get better, but they're trying to be better in your eyes, that's something kind of powerful. Mm -hmm. Because when someone looks up to you in that way, as I have in the past, it's great when they actually understand that you're trying and they, they, they just don't cut you off. And one thing I've noticed is that when someone does that to me, when someone's looking up to me, I have to be patient because someone was patient with, with me at one point. If they're trying, you got to give them that. And it's only when they make a mistake and they just don't care. Mm -hmm. When they don't care, then that's a cutoff. But when they're trying and you can see that they're trying to improve, give them a chance, you know, and that's it. Okay, okay, yeah. excellent. And I want you to think, like, you've got, you go back to America, you're visiting, you're in Chicago, walking mm -hmm. down the street, and, uh, you know, friend or family member, or just even someone who, like you said, looks up to you, sure. comes up to you and says, hey, Joel, I want to, I think I want to move overseas hmm. or I think I want to, I want to have a big change in my life. Hmm. What would be your biggest piece of advice for them? I would say, where do you want to go? What interests you? Why are you looking to go abroad? Because you have to have a certain personality for it. And my first thing would never be to say no. I would never say no. Mm -hmm. My first thing is to see why and where. And what really interests them? What language are you interested in? What culture are you interested in? And what's your mindset of the world so far? Because life abroad can get, it's, it's great. I love it. I love Vietnam. It's wonderful. But you have to understand that, are you going to be the kind of person that can follow rules? Are you going to be the kind of person that needs to see everything in your way all the time? Mm -hmm. If you're the kind of person that can be a bit more flexible, I would say, have a conversation. Where do you want to go? All this stuff. If you're the kind of person where you need things to be your way, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be difficult. Um, but I would always have the conversation. I would never say no. Mm -hmm. And I want to say, why? Who has inspired you? What has inspired you? What have you done? What research have you done? Because my thing is, if you're going to come to somebody of interest, you need to, to, to provide some kind of value first, some kind of information. You can't just say, hey, hey I want to do something. Okay. <laughs> you know, okay. <laughs> but if you say, Hey, I want to do this. I've looked at this. I researched this because when I wanted to go to China for the first time, I talked to my Chinese friends about it. I learned some Mandarin. I was very interested in the culture. I watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos on it. And I learned from different people who were from China about China. And that's what made them want to help me. Cause I had an interest and I had put in some work into learning about the culture. Mm -hmm. If you come to me with that kind of mindset, cool. Let's have a let, let, let's have a talk. But if you come to me just say I want to go abroad, 
a lot of people want to go abroad. A lot of people want to do a lot of things. I don't care. You know, what? what is your interest? Why do you want to do it? Give me a logical reason. If it's, I mean, yeah, sure, there's some emotion attached to it. Fine, that's great. But what is the logical reason and what's your plan? Mm-hmm. When I wanted to come to Vietnam, I told all my family about it, and they were like, okay, what's your plan? And I told them my plan, and that's what got them on board with helping me get here. But if you come in with no plan, it's hard to help you. Mm-hmm. So, Or at least an idea, at least an idea. But yeah, that's it. Okay, that's okay. It. So I've interviewed probably over 20 people now. Sure. The one thing, the one common theme that they have is that they all say, do your research. Oh yeah. Oh, you, now, you, you have to, you, you have to. You just said it, you just said it in a longer way, but it, like it's always come down to do your research you have before, to. You, before you make that move. Going in blind is dangerous. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, I want fast. Sure. I'm going to go 10 seconds. All right. I want your three biggest lessons that you've learned since you've moved overseas. Okay. Have patience, speak properly, and network. Okay. So have patience. Uh, go a little deeper into that. Okay. Have patience, meaning things are not always going to go your way. And even when you want to accomplish something, you have to give yourself time. You have to give yourself time. We're living in a world where everything is fast, 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 and that's fine. But again, at the end of the day, Trees don't grow any faster. Mm-hmm. Nature is still slow. Mm-hmm. Everything is still slow. You must be able to give yourself time because if you don't, you are going to burn yourself out unnecessarily. Mm-hmm. That's number one. Uh, patience. And then number two was... Speak properly. Speak properly. Yeah, you have to speak properly. You have to speak in a way where everyone can understand you. Again, most of the world does not speak English. One thing I did learn from uh, Nas Na Sire, from, 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 Nas da- from Nas Daily, is that... You want to speak for people who don't speak English. Mm. That's the thing. If I'm speaking to people from America, yes, I can speak a little bit faster and with a bit more of a slang. But if I'm speaking to someone who doesn't speak English, you have to speak clear, you have to speak slowly, and you have to speak in a way that they are going to understand. Yeah. That's that. And plus, it just makes you sound more professional as well. That's number two. And number three was patience speaking clearly and networking. So again, you need a team. And the biggest thing I've realized is that life is more fun when you have people around you. The number one thing above all else is that life is about people. And when life is about people, when you, people, when you have that mindset, you want to do right by people. You don't want to do wrong. You don't want to snake anybody. You want to be the kind of person that's known that you can be trusted, that you can be on time, that you can be everything that you need to be for someone else's benefit in that way they can also benefit you because when you can benefit others when you can give value to others it makes them like you people want to work with those they like and trust Mm -hmm. and when you can do that it makes life much more fun much more enjoyable because you know we're living in a time where there's electricity and everything where we can live alone but in countries where people do live alone they're not happy you know they're not happy so a big for, for, and, and I'll go a little bit deeper into this, Japan versus Vietnam. A big reason why I came to Vietnam is that it's a complete 180 from Japan. Mm. Japan is a first world society. I love it. It has everything that you need to survive and more. But the whole life is about people think I didn't really sense it there. Mm-hmm. There are some pockets, sure. But saying hi to a random person on the street, it can be quite difficult. You can go anywhere on the streets in Vietnam and say hi, and and you can start a conversation with anybody. Even if you don't speak Vietnamese, hi. You get a smile, at least, for most people. So I love that here. And it's so easy to make friends because, especially when I was in Saigon, oh, my goodness, it was so easy to make friends. Mm. Even in Hanoi, it's not that hard. So, but, yeah, that's one thing. Life is about people. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Yes. We've got the three fast questions, the three, the three top things. Sure. Now, we're gonna go. We're gonna go dark. We're gonna. Okay. I want your worst experience while my living worst overseas. experience. My worst experience. Um, my worst experience had to come from me not being able to speak up for myself. Okay. And this is what I. This is what I will say. My worst experience was my own fault. And it was because. When you don't have the experiences of being around people, 
that are that have the ability to talk you into certain things that you don't want to do only because you don't know how to say no, it messes with your head completely. And people wonder why I'm so loud right now. It's because I'm free. I'm mentally free. And the way I think now was the way I've always thought. It's just I was too scared to, to be out before. And I would say... Yeah, I think just it was just a, a multitude of events where maybe and it wasn't really like anything physically bad, but it was just I would do things for certain people that I just didn't want to do. Mm -hmm. No, maybe it was like get money here or just like that. But it was just I couldn't say no, even if it was something small, even the small things. You want to go to a certain place that you don't want to go to. You want to go to a party, or like you go to a party that you don't want to go to. Even small things, it eats at you because you're not standing up for yourself. And the one thing I can say is that unless you can have those boundaries and stand up for yourself, nobody else is going to respect that as much as you do for yourself. There will be good people always that can see that and they don't want to mess with that. But there are also people that will, you know, try to see how far they can go, you know? Mm -hmm. So... If there's one lesson I've learned above, you know, about life is that you need to have a strong voice. You don't have to be rude. You don't have to be mean, but it has to be strong and it has to be firm. When it's firm, when it's strong, again, we live in a world today where a lot of times having a firm voice can be seen as, you know, bad. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but that's what gets respected. That is what gets respected. And having a firm voice makes people without that voice trust you more in some, in some cases. Because I think deep down, everyone wants to have that voice, that firm voice. Some people are, are, are softer by nature. Some people are louder. That's fine. But you want to be able to say no. And saying no comes in different fashions. Some people will just say no. Some people say, you know, I'm busy right now. Whatever way you have to do, be able to say no. Mm -hmm. If you cannot, it's going to eat at you and it's going to make your mind go crazy unnecessarily. So this is where it comes back to... You know, things can be your fault and not being able to say no is your fault. Yes, that mindset might have been instilled by someone else. Unfortunately, it could have been a parent. It could have been a friend. It could have been or I guess a past friend. It could have been anybody in your life. But it is up to you. Those words come out of your mouth. It's up to you to say no. Mm -hmm. And that's what gives you the power. And when you have that power, you become free, more relaxed, and then you can go through life enjoying it, you know. Because there's there's some more challenges that you have to go through, and if you can't say no, those challenges will never be met. Okay. Yes. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And what about the opposite of that? Good. So uh, yeah. yes. But before we do that, I yes, just sure. want to touch on it. When you talk about the voice, mm -hmm. do you think that you may be talking about the authority of controlling your own self and just knowing yourself and having that authority to be able to tell others no? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Okay. If you, self-accountability and self-control are some of the two biggest lessons we can learn as humans. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like, like the Buddhist quote, the one that makes you angry can control you. The one that makes you happy can control you as well. If someone knows that you can get happy by giving you something and they know you don't have any self-control to say no to it, they'll just keep stringing you along. Mm -hmm. But it's, and it's hard sometimes. We get to a place where it's like, you, you don't want to stop doing something because it is so fun. But being able to say no, even to yourself sometimes, it's what gives you control. And when you can do that, it makes life so much better because you could have stopped yourself from going down a path that was really bad. Mm -hmm. Or you could have even possibly stopped someone else. So, yeah, having that self-control can help you and those around you as well. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. All right. Now we'll go into... What's the most amazing thing that's happened to you in your 11 years? Moving to Vietnam. Okay. Vietnam, definitely. Because all the lessons I've learned about to the, uh, up until this point are now being able to come to fruition. When I was in Japan, my first year there, my first few years, this is how I would talk. <clears throat> hey, how you doing? What's good? Yeah. I would actually have one-on-one -on -one student lessons like this in this kind of posture. And I had a good friend. He told me, th this is what a good friend is. A good friend is someone, 
if you're driving a car off a cliff, your friend is not supposed to say, oh, stop, stop, stop. Your friend's supposed to say, hey, dummy, stop the car. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it. So um, he told me that. He was very real and blunt with me. He said, no, you have to talk properly. Get rid of any kind of slouching that you have because, especially in Japan, everything is about presentation. Everything. So... You have to speak properly. You have to dress well. You have to speak well. You have to be able to communicate. You have to be able to express yourself in a, in a positive way that inspires others to see you in a positive light. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, life becomes so much easier. But slouching and speaking with no kind of enthusiasm and being lazy with the way you talk and move, it's, it's not inspiring and it doesn't make you fun. It doesn't... Whatever job you do, yes, I teach, but... Anything that, that you do that is met with enthusiasm, fun, excitement, like you really love it, like love it. I want you to love it because if you love it, I'll love it too. Mm -hmm. Make me love it. I want to, I don't want to be bored in life. If I'm learning about, I don't know, engineering, I know nothing about engineering, but make it fun for me. Tell me, you know, how machines work. Tell me how something works in a fun way. Okay. You know, because what, uh, when I learned, I was learning uh, data analysis sometimes. Back, you know, just, just, uh, just, uh, just for fun. All the teachers online were extremely boring. Mm. They were boring. And I'm just like, I can't learn this. I can't. So, I mean, also, I'm not really a numbers guy anyway. But still, it was be fun. Be enjoyable. Don't be the class clown, but be entertaining to a point. And because even the guys that teach really co like complex topics, they'll crack in, in a joke here, uh, here or there. I remember I put in uh, one group saying, if you are a teacher and you can be strict, but also firm and crack a joke here and there, people will love you. Mm -hmm. I got so much hate for saying that teachers can't crack jokes. Why? Why can't you crack a joke? Why? It's just you don't want to go too far with it. Mm. That's it. But... You, yeah, don't want it, you don't want it to get momentum that is outside of your control. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. I understand. Have you seen the movie The Three Idiots? Just a side topic. You know what? Mm, I've seen parts of it as a kid, but no. Yeah. Okay. You need to watch the movie The Three Idiots. Okay. Uh, it will completely change the way that you... Like, it, what you're saying yes. is, is kind of what's being put in there. Learning should be fun because it's inspiring your curiosity to ask more questions, to mm. get out and, and do things. And in this movie, uh, it's like these three guys and then this one, this, this fourth friend mm. who is just like learning just because he enjoys learning about mm. stuff. And then the other, the other friends are trying to figure it out. And it's a great movie. Just, just watch it. Like, it's, it's, it's an older movie, yeah? No, no. It's a, it's a newer. It's like you a, know what? A, I was thinking of, uh, you said three idiots. You know, I was thinking about Dumb and Dumber. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, interview over. Right on home. Goodbye. <laughs> oh man, oh man, no, oh, no man. Three idiots. I think it came out uh, a few years ago, maybe like ten years ago. Okay, because um, we were talking about, I'm like, is it an older movie? I'm like, no, that can't be an older movie. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, sure. I think if you watch that, you mm. you'll take like part of it, and you'll take like lessons from it. You'll be like, yeah, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah, Sounds yeah. good. Awesome. Um. All right. Cool. So, um, if you could go back 11 years, uh, yeah. time machine, jump in, hit the button, boop, mm. and you meet yourself face to face, Ooh. and you know you're about to take this journey, mm. what would be one thing you tell yourself to change about how you left or why you left or just something you would change about your experience? I would say get ready for a life of discomfort. Okay. Your comfort days are over. There's going to be some good moments, but your comfort days are over. You're, you're going to have to learn new languages to a certain point, And you're about to go through a life that's going to be mentally challenging and you cannot give up. You're going to want to give up and you're going to want to quit and you're going to want to run away from your problems. You're going to want to run away. And if you do, you are not going to learn the lessons that you need to. And I'm going to hate you for that. So you need to keep it. Don't stop. Keep it going because your future self is talking to you. Don't mess this up, you know? So mm -hmm. keep going. It's going to hurt. It's going to be painful. You're going to be, you're, you're going to go through some heavy challenges, but you're going to get through it 
and then you'll talk like me. <laughs> you know? So, so, you know, right now you're a dweeb, you're a geek, you're a dork right now. But relax, you know, get to working out, keep going, you're gonna meet new people, and you're gonna meet some guy in the future that's gonna have a, a 30 million followers, and you're going to be in Vietnam. Don't ask why, don't change anything. Just, you'll be in Vietnam one day. <laughs> so, um, but you have a lot of, of, of work ahead of you before that. So that's that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Now, uh, we, we jumped around a little bit. Sure. Uh, as many people know, I send out a list of questions that I'm going to ask beforehand and just say, this is generally the, where we're going to go with it. Um, I'm going off of that list now. Mm. Uh, and in your experience mm. right now, what's trending is this passport bros thing. Ah, right? yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and there are many different reasons for why people move. Sure. Can you go into your motivation to make that move overseas? You know what? When I was in university, I studied TV promotion. Okay. And my last year of university, I knew I, I wasn't fully prepared for the TV world for, for video world because it was at that time, it was 2013. And that's when YouTube was popping with skits and everything, everyone was doing their own thing. And I was like, I don't know any of this. Well, I, I, I learned how to stand behind a camera, a big camera for someone talking about news. I said, this is boring. I wanna have fun, I wanna travel. So the years before that, I had actually studied some, again, some, some Mandarin, and I had already had an interest in going abroad. So. Me going abroad was more just like I needed a job and I wanted to do something just outside the country. I just needed to get out. I needed to show myself that I could be independent without my parents there and that I can live alone. One thing that my parents had told me when I was a kid is that we need to know that you guys, that me and, and my brothers could survive if they ever passed away before we turned 18. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, this is a good time to prove it. You know, let's go. And luckily it's been pretty good for the most part. It's, I mean, for the most part, it's been good. It's been good. Mm -hmm. So, and that's basically why I left. That's basically it, you know, and to find a job, find more work. And I stayed out because I met so many cool people. Mm -hmm. I met great people. I never thought I would meet people from India. I met guys from uh, Uzbekistan. I was like, I never thought I wouldn't see somebody from there. So. It's just more fun. It's extremely fun. And then going to Malaysia, seeing a whole, because also with Islam, mm -hmm. you know, after 9-11, we were all taught how bad Islam was. Going to an Islamic country. Now, before I went, I didn't know it was an Islamic country until I actually went there. I saw a mosque. And the first thing I thought was like, oh my gosh, there's a mosque, you know? And then someone actually took me inside the mosque and said, hey, come inside and pray with us. You don't have to do anything crazy. Just, 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 just uh, see how we pray. And I was like, whoa, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was just calm. It was just, okay, you guys aren't crazy, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, one thing I've noticed is that black American culture is similar to so many other cultures. Mm. So many, I mean, even Vietnam culture, it's similar. I would say we're probably the most similar to like Filipino culture. And it's having all those experiences is what keeps me out here. Cause I know there's so many more. Okay. It's great, yeah. Uh, and, and going back to the states, those experiences kind of would be watered down and mm. and uh, different, different. I definitely, think, definitely. Yeah, I okay, good. And you you talked about your family for a little bit. Mm. Were were your was your family and your friends supportive of you making the decision to move to China? Yes, I remember my dad told me one time when, uh, after I got the Chinese job. Um, he told me you probably won't want to come back. He said, there's a chance you might not want to come back. He said, that's okay. Come back when you can. But even recently, I would maybe say two months ago, he said, hey, you know what? We want you to come home, but, here my, but, but, but here's the thing. You are a man. You need to find your own way. You need to build yourself. If, you, if you're not ready to come home yet because you have work to do, stay out there. Mm. And I was like, cool. That was good. Um, but yeah, that's, that's it. They were very supportive. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah. All right. And... Uh when you were doing your research, mm. was there any literature, any media, or anything that inspired you to be like, yeah, I'm going? Or yes. To, to, or to further that desire to, to go? 
There's a South African guy. His name is Serpent Zede. Okay. Yes. And he was in China at the time. I think he was in China for 13 or 14 years. And he would just make all these fun vlogs about China. He was in Shenzhen. Mm -hmm. And I love his still I, I love the way he talked. He was so chill and calm. And, but he had really good information about China. And I was like, this guy's awesome. Mm -hmm. So I would just continually watch him every single time he had a video out. And that was great. And plus, I got into, into some more China vloggers at the time, and that was cool. And But he's the one that really inspired me to really make that first move. Okay. You know, so that was great. That was That's great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And what's your favorite part of the journey so far? The fact that I can communicate so much better, be, uh, better than before. Okay. You know, I have a huge stuttering problem. And one thing that has helped me out to not get rid of it, unfortunately, but to deal with it is to speak slower. Speak slower because now my words are more clear, my voice is a bit deeper when I speak slower, and I can communicate much better. Mm -hmm. And I would say my ability to communicate now has probably been the best skill set I have gotten so far. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you've gained skills with the moving abroad. Oh, 100%. 100%. Nice. Yes. Okay. Good, good. Who would you tell not to travel? <clears throat> if you are someone that views race as your primary focus of life, it's going to be difficult because guess what? Most of the world doesn't care. Mm -hmm. Most of the world does not care. If you are someone that cannot adapt easily or at least attempt to adapt, you're going to have a hard time. I'm not saying you shouldn't travel, but you're going to have a very hard time. If you are someone that cannot handle different weather elements or different people looking at you or saying or being very blunt mm -hmm. about what you look like, it can be very difficult. And you need to be able to have fun with it. Humor is a great part of traveling mm -hmm. because I think most humor comes from pain anyway. But you need to make fun out of the hard and maybe even bad situations. Because if you're just going to stay angry the whole time, there's no point in being there. Mm. But yes, if you are someone that can see the world for what it is, not really try to change it, but adapt to it and use what it offers you as your own energy, then yeah, I would say like that. I know there's, there's, uh, there's a quote from, uh, what movie was it? It was Doctor Strange and it was the, the ancient one. And she had told him, you cannot beat a river into submission. You can only use its energy as your own. And if you can do that with life, go ahead. You will be great that way. What is the one thing, and I want you to take a moment, think about it, mm. that you're most grateful for in your journey? Mm. The ability to trust myself. Okay. Because no matter whether I'm riding a motorbike or whether I'm speaking to new people or even going to the Nas Summit, I was very hesitant on going. Trusting that I'm going to make the right decision. And even if it's not right, it's going to lead me down the right path. Trusting that whatever decision I make is going to be something that was my choosing Maybe from inspiration from different people, but it's my choosing and that whatever happens, I stand ten toes deep in that decision. Of course, if I get new information, I need to pivot, fine, that's sure. But to be able to trust myself and to just take action, not be too scared to take action, that's probably the, most thing, the, the biggest thing I'm grateful for because that has allowed me to meet new people, get new experiences, be trusted by others, and to live a life where I, again, am mentally free to do what I know I need to do and where I can say no quite easily. Mm -hmm. So, but only would need be, of course. And yeah, that's what I'm most grateful for. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. All right. And uh, what's next for you? Ah, 
You know what? TikTok, man. TikTok. Uh, like I said before, we went to Nas Summit. I met you there. That was great. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. And just seeing so many great people at one point just making content. Because when you're by yourself just working, you don't really see it. Mm -hmm. When everybody's there and they're all trying to make content and make fun things, mm -hmm. it's like that's extreme motivation. And I had already had the skills to do it. I just didn't have the motivation to. When I saw... Now, see, you're talking about how your videos must be poppy, great, great cuts, great sound effects, all this stuff. Be entertaining. I was like, let's go. Let's go. I bought myself a new iPhone. I bought myself a new green screen, all this stuff that next day. And I was just editing, editing, editing. My TikTok, it went from 67 followers that day to two weeks later, nearly 500. Back. So... I'm going. Okay. I'm going. Every time I open my 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 uh, TikTok, every half hour, there's at least 99 new, new uh, notifications. Okay. And I'm just like, yo, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I know that TikTok. I don't think the views are monetizable. Maybe not yet. If that if it's ever going to happen, but I do know that when you get noticed, people might want to work with you in the future. So you just got to keep going, keep going, keep going. I've actually gotten new teaching jobs from people who have noticed me, mm -hmm. and. There have been people who have wanted me to teach for the schools. I got to get to know them first. But people who have actually wanted me to teach with them and teach them more things about video because of my videos on TikTok already. So it's only been two weeks. Mm -hmm. So not saying that I'm the best, but I'm put, I, I, I will try to outwork everybody. And I work, I teach, I love teaching. I try to implement my teaching and my video things together being able to communicate in a fun way where everyone can understand. The things I've, I've, I've learned from the videos from Nas Daily are that speak for the world, speak to the world, and do it in an entertaining way that's meaningful, that's enjoyable, and that's real. Put that emotion in there. If it's sad, be sad. Let it out. If it's happy, if you're excited, show those facial expressions, your hand gestures, everything. Be real, mm -hmm. be authentic. And people will feel that because we're human. And that's going to make it more fun and enjoyable and exciting for everyone who's watching. Yeah, you're you're showing your vulnerabilities. You're showing that you are human. That you're, you're sharing your experience with others, and others can relate to it. So there you go. That, there you cool, go. Cool. So before we move on, mm. go ahead and plug your TikTok and your YouTube. Mm. Where can people find you? How can they get in touch with you? So I'm mainly on TikTok right now. Though, so that is this is Joe one word lowercase one one four. Okay. This is Joe one one four. This is Joe 114. You see it? This is Joe 114. I'll put it like over here. There you go. Yeah. Uh, YouTube is just This is Joe. I haven't been on YouTube uh, too much, but when TikTok picks up, maybe I'll put those videos back on YouTube. But yes, that's it. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Joel, for coming on. No problem. This was great. This was great. Let's, yes, yes. We'll do it again. Oh, 100%. Yeah. If you like this content, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to know when I post that notification bell thingy, uh, go ahead and smash that as well. Uh, if you're interested in coming on to the show and sharing your experience from anywhere in the world, email me at expatyourlife at gmail.com and I can get in touch with you and we can arrange something. And if this has been inspiring to you and you think someone could benefit from it, please do me the favor of sharing it. Until the next time, stay awesome, travel well, and peace. Hey, boom. <laughs> next to Saigon, man. Yeah. There you go. Come on down. Come all on right, down. all right.